is this something that you have just discovered this year any kind of like mental things that you've been dealing with or is this something that you've known for a while that you have been dealing with Honestly, the last couple of years, I would say, that I discovered that it's not just, oh, that's just how I am, and I have a pet peeve of this and that, whatever, or I have a nerve-wracking social anxiety or whatever, but it's, I brushed it under the table for a very long time, and it took the last couple of years to understand that it's something that needs to be um, confronted and and dealt with and and talked about, and for, for me, it's, if I talk about it, it can't hurt as much, you know? It's it's going to be there. Make your loved ones um, aware of your issues or uh, aware of your efforts to work and manage your life this way, and it's, it won't be as painful. It's a day-by-day thing. You know that. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah. And so for me, it's like you said, it's having trying to find something each day, especially during a freaking pandemic where I'm working from home. <laughs> Every day, I'm home every day with me and my thoughts. And if I sneeze three times in a row, I'm like, oh, my God, what the, you know, like, there's a lot going on this year, especially. So just fight. It's a daily battle. And you just have to accept the fact that it's a daily battle and move along with that, I guess. Yes, absolutely. The next person, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, what does your anxiety feel like when you know that you're kind of having anxiety? Um. If, well, I guess, I don't know if there's too much information, but bodily functions are obviously a thing. Sweating, mm-hmm. nervous sweats, mm-hmm. uh, nausea, and then uh, stomach aches, depending on the situation in the setting. So I'm always looking for the bathroom if I have to, like, throw up or if I'm mm-hmm. nervous. Even even the smallest things, like, oh, I'm going to a job interview. It's like, all right, where's the bathroom? I might have to throw up oh before I go. Oh, my God. You and do the same like, thing I do. Yeah, yeah. And, and if another example is if someone says, oh, we're going to this new place, I'm like, is there parking? What's the parking lot look like? Yes. Is there a bathroom nearby? Because I might throw chunks. Yes. <laughs> I do the same thing. If I'm in a public place or, like, if I know I'm going somewhere, I always, like, have to look for the closest escape, like a bathroom yeah. or somewhere that I can go to be alone or, like, it, mm-hmm. I just get that feeling of, like, I'm going to get sick. I'm going to be sick. Oh, my God. But I, like, yeah. know it's my anxiety. That's, like, the most yeah. frustrating part about it is, like, you know it's your anxiety. Yep. But you, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter if you know it's your anxiety because it's, like, blah, 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 Yeah. You know? The brain the brain is connected to the stomach. It, it's, it's, uh, your anxiety doesn't matter. You can say oh, it's just my brain, it's just my mind, it's fine, everything is okay. But your body doesn't really know that because you're just going to freak out and your your muscles are going to get all tightened up and your stomach's going to hurt and you're sweating like crazy. It's so here's a kind of story time, I guess, but this correlates with what we're talking about. Um, you and I, when we were younger and we'd be at parties, you know, at blank B Street and stuff like that, um, we would, you and I, we were on the same same wavelength when it came to emotions and we would have our heart to hearts all the time that was like maddie and skicks like heart to heart hour remember those <laughs> when yep, we would do totally. that like totally. uh, maddie maddie and i i'm gonna try like really hard not to say my real name but maddie and i would like go out onto the balconies or onto the we had a fire escape at a house that we used to frequent a lot uh for parties uh one of our friends lived there on uh b street and he and I used to go in onto the uh, fire escape quite often and I'd like be there smoking cigarettes and like he'd just be chilling and we'd have just heart to hearts about everything. That's like what we did. It was definitely like one of our signature things was to just talk about emotions and like our friends and our significant others if we were dating somebody or whatever it may be. And how did like, did those help you? Like the heart, did heart to hearts help you? Like not even just with me, but with like anybody else. Like are heart to hearts something that you think are really useful when dealing with this stuff like if you have one friend to like go to and discuss things with openly i i I think those conversations that you and i had was kind of like a way of foreshadowing about my future and how i would open up to people uh like i do now um before it was like a heart to heart maddie and skicks it's like that was special and it always will be but now that those conversations that i've had with you have helped me um I don't know, I guess, had those same kind of conversations with many 
people, mm-hmm. not just a few or just one or two people like you and I would. Um, it was practice, I guess. Yeah. But it, was, it was very special. That's great. I love that that has led. That's that's interesting that that has led into your comfortability about talking about stuff like this with other people. I think that's awesome. That's so great to have people to confide into and to feel comfortable enough with yourself to be able to go to somebody and be like, this is what's going on with me. This is what's happening. I want to, I want to talk to you about this and have people who are there for you to listen is so rewarding. Yeah. And that's, it makes you realize the people who come into your life, who should stay and who has to go. And if they go, that's on them. But like I said, uh, you and I, 15 years. That I'm, I'm so proud of that. I'm proud of us <laughs> that we've kept that going now and forever. That like, I mean, this is great. I'm, I'm having a good time, and I love you so much. So. I love you. This year and doing the things that you're doing to kind of get out of ruts and like to kind of heal yourself emotionally. How has this shaped? who you are today even like your past you can talk about your past too like anything how has it shaped who you are as a person today all right so here's where i can go into a little bit of depth yeah go ahead please give us some detail i know that i used to be i probably i mean obviously i'm flawed i'm a human being but i was so fucking selfish all through my 20s all i wanted to do was party and look good and have my social status like w- well enough where I'm comfortable and then it's like oh my god I cannot believe how much of a dick I was and it's in this point in my life and obviously age and growing up helps but looking back and thinking like man what were you doing all you wanted to do was get drunk and look good doing it like come on mm-hmm. stupid mm-hmm. Um, I think I, not to sound so corny, but this time in my life has been a very spiritual awakening. I find myself being more of an empathetic person and compassionate. And if someone is disrespectful to me, I don't think right away, like, go fuck yourself. I think, what happened to you in your life that you needed to lash out at me? Um, I don't, I, I worry about you first before I get angry, which I guess is the way i'm trying to look at life like if someone's being outrageous to me i'm gonna try to remove myself from the situation um as opposed to trying to look good trying to fight somebody and hoping i win and looking and looking good and and whatever the fuck so i think empathy and compassion and understanding of human nature has taken me to a place where i'm comfortable it's just fucking challenging. It's overwhelming because once you're, uh, quote, woken up to the world, you can't really see much else. Like, you can't see the way you used to think ever again. Like, I never knew about your anxiety skits. So mm-hmm. knowing that but knowing that now, it's like, wow, I, I her too. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not by myself here with this whole towards mental health what are your thoughts on stigmas the fact that people are still criticized and ridiculed for their mental illnesses is just fucking appalling to me and the fact that it still is going to continue is egregious to me as well it's just i cannot believe people can't understand what another human being is going through without some kind of a just get over it man it's like Mm -hmm. no no don't fucking tell me to get over Mm -hmm. like hey you're you're fine man you're safe like you're doing good it's like you might think i'm doing good but my day-to-day fucking struggling you don't know about i will tell you so you can understand but if you're gonna ridicule me and and get in my face about it every day it's like who the fuck get away from me who the fuck are you to judge like you can take your judgment and go home with it i don't care i will talk to anybody anywhere about my anxiety or my social anxiety or whatever the fuck i'm going through every single day right i will talk to anybody Mm -hmm. but the first sign of attitude or judgment it's like i don't have time for this it's not good so either try to understand the best you can or take a walk any old person just heard us talking right now they'd probably be like uh this is really like corny and too much well then somebody else would be like 
no, I really resonate with this. Like, yeah. I'm going to sit and listen because now I know that I'm not by myself. Like, I'm my struggle right now, obviously, being in quarantine or working from home is going to bed every night and not being able to go to sleep because this shit haunts me and then waking up to another fucking day on my computer by myself. It's like, I need an outlet. I need to see people. I need to just, I'm a, I'm an extrovert. I'm, yes. I can be, I can be shy, but I'm definitely an extrovert and I have to see people. I need to hug, kiss, talk. Yeah, you but, are, <laughs> you are very fucking Italian. You are yeah, yeah. extrovert <laughs> like I've ever met one. Holy shit. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, somebody could need this. That's why I'm doing this. That's why we're doing this. That's why yes. we have this. Uh, we're That's having that. this interview. Yeah, we're having this interview, and I'm doing this every Monday because I want people to know that they're not alone in stuff like this. Like, we're not alone in how we feel in our mental health, in our in everything, day-to-day life. It doesn't matter what it is. But yeah. we are not alone. So that's why I, I think that this is very important, a important, important um, thing to do uh, is so that if anybody needs this, this is here every Monday. You are here. You can come and listen and hang out and be with people who are dealing with the same thing. A lot of my community deals with mental health. Uh, that's a lot of my following is from that because of all the videos I did on TikTok about mental health, etc., and all that shit. Yep. So... Let me see what time is somebody who, you know, it could be people listening in this chat. It could be anybody in general, your friends, whoever it may be. But what would you tell somebody who is struggling and who is dealing with either just stress or depression or mental health or living alone or anything? Like, what would you tell people for advice? Because you're very good at advice. I think everybody needs to have an anchor in their life, something they can fall back on no matter what it is. And not just, I'm going to sit on my couch and get high or get, have a beer. So that's not what, I'm, not what I mean. I mean, something that gets your ass up and you have to go do that and be consistent with it. So you can, when you're done with whatever it is, that hobby of the day, it can be anything like lifting or MMA for me and or, or drawing, artistic, any, anything that, keeps you going back to it and you won't stop until you master it like mm-hmm. you know how they say ten thousand hours you master something I, I think you need really to put your life something has to something in your life consistently needs to be worked on and it's going to the gym and learning something new and feeling that accomplishment just complete something um it's like Just keeping yourself some... occupied, keeping your mind occupied. Yeah, if you sit with your thoughts all day, with your thoughts all day long, and you're not doing anything for yourself, and believe me, this, this is me now. Like on days when I'm not in the gym or on a rest day, I'm making my my body rest. It's it's the rest days that are the hardest because I feel useless because I just work on a computer and then I'll fucking sit on my couch or whatever. I need to find something to do. Like I'll go run a few errands just to like not be in my house. But like back to what I was saying, I think you need to have an anchor, a hobby, a discipline, a consistent, you need people to help you by the way, do this. If you need, that's the best part, connecting with people, um, a coach or a buddy who has the same hobby as you, Skix, you and your community. That's fucking amazing. Like you have, people to go to you have a role to play and you're very good at it um having so many relationships with people that can be an anchor you know kind of making sure you stay up to date with your friends and your family just as long as you're not by yourself with your unbelievable dark thoughts you know it'll last for a little while i'm sure but Mm -hmm. having something to just go to to get your mind off and have other people help you help yourself. It's just relationships and love and compassion and community is so important. Mm-hmm. Just especially this year, man, having somebody there for you is just incredible. So find people who think the same way as you do and embrace that relationship relationships.